everybody. Um, I'm, I'm Jamie Holmes, and I'm moderating the room today, um, and I'm moderating the, the Zoom. Um, so folks on Zoom know that, um, I'm going to stand here so they can a little better, um, know that I'm moderating the chat. And so if you have a question, I'll, um, I'll stop and um, answer any questions. But let's get to it. Um, we have from Oklahoma State University joining us in person, um, Fran Janier and Han Bingham Brunner. Brunner? Burner. Um, and then uh, remotely, we have Dr. Stephanie Link joining us, and they're going to talk to us about um, critical conversations, uh, critical discussions, the development of a simulation based OER for the higher ed classroom. Thank you. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, welcome everyone to um, our presentation on the development of our simulation based open educational resource for the higher ed classroom. Sorry. Um, so I'm Dr. Glenn Jr. I'm a teaching assistant professor in the English department at Oklahoma State University, but I'm also the director of the International Composition Program. And that's where we're housing this project. Joining me today is Han Bingham Brun, who is the associate director in that program. And in online, we have our collaborators in this project, Dr. Steph Link, also at Oklahoma State, and also Oh, a little closer to the oh, mic. Um, and also Dr. Unhi Kenhes, who is at the University of Indiana, Bloomington. Um, so there are four of us working on this project. And um, earlier this morning, I think Brad described people who develop their own or author their own OERs as um, eager beavers. Yeah. I'm not sure if we feel like eager beavers or mad hatters sometimes when we're developing this project, because it is an extreme amount of work. Um, so how we're going to um, organize this presentation today, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the International Composition Program at Oklahoma State University and explain some of the rationale of why we decided to embark on this huge project of authoring our own open textbook. And then Han is going to go into more detail about exactly what we mean by simulation-based pedagogy because the term that we use, I think, is quite specific to our field of applied linguistics. Um, and then you're going to explain more about the open textbook. So, um, yeah, next slide. the International Composition Program at Oklahoma State University provides um, high quality and research backed um, second language. Uh, learning environments for OSU's international students. As you can see here, we have two um, international freshman classes. So international students will take these in place of the so-called regular first year composition classes, usually when they come in as freshmen in their first and second semesters. Um, we also offer this research um, writing class at the graduate level for our students also. Um, okay. In terms of approach, um, so across the International Composition Programme, our approach is really based in communicative language teaching, which means that we're really emphasising interaction. Um, we want to use authentic texts when we're teaching, and we also want to connect students' experiences in the classroom with how they use language outside of the classroom and across their majors and across the disciplines. Um, beyond those general approaches, you'll also see that actually our second semester undergraduate um, class and our graduate class share a lot of the same features. They're very genre focused, process oriented writing. But our pretty unique class is this entry level freshman composition class where we're really focusing on interactive communicative tasks for students and we're using methods associated with simulation and gaming. So that's pretty different and pretty unique type of curriculum. So um, in terms of OERs, similar to other writing programs at Oklahoma State University that are housed in the English department. So for example, our first year composition program and our technical writing program, we have also been pretty active in incorporating OERs into our curriculum. For our second semester undergraduate class, our colleague, uh, Dr. Carol Moder, um, 
authored this text. So university academic writing for international students, a usage-based approach. And usage-based really means about language and content and interaction and really making the links between learning in the class and use outside of the class. So that has been fully adopted and incorporated for that second semester undergraduate class. And that was adopted in 2020, I think. Then more recently in 2022, our collaborator, Dr. Steph Link, along with Han uh, and another colleague, uh, developed this text, Scientific Writing for Publication, a transdisciplinary approach, approach. And we are using that for our graduate level <coughs> writing class. But this leaves the question of, well, what are we using for this pretty unique introductory freshman writing course? Um, well, we haven't adopted an open textbook um, for that class for a number of reasons, some of which I've alluded to already. It's pretty unique and it's pretty different. We haven't found any EAP or English for Academic Purposes materials that fit that particular course. Um, and that's for a number of reasons. We need something that fits uh, the writing demands of that specific educational context. And we also have um, a pretty unique demographic of students taking that class. So we need a uh, text that addresses variable cultural familiarity, intellectually engaging, and so on and so forth. Um, the text that we currently use for that class was developed back in 2007 by our colleague, Dr. Jean Halleck. The text is a little outdated now, um, and it's also $42. So we were really looking for some OER options for our students, but we weren't finding any. Um, so that is the concern. There's no OER material for that specific um, English for Academic Purposes class and for that specific curriculum. So at this point, we thought, OK, let's go ahead and develop our own. Um, now, at around about the same time as we decided to, to take the plunge and embark on offering our own OER for this course, um, Oklahoma State University leadership were in the process of re-articulating the land-grant mission. So as they were doing this, we thought, well, actually, now that we're thinking about authoring this text, this simulation-based text, why don't we try and align it with this land-grant mission? So our aim for the text it's simulation based, but we are um, attempting to incorporate these four priority areas that OSU uh, are focusing on. So the text will focus on these four areas, innovating to nourish the world, powering a growing world population, leading an aerospace and enhancing uh, human and animal health. So I'm going to pass over yeah. to Han, who will describe in more detail the text and the project. Yeah, thanks, Ben. So again, we have this really unique course. We have um, what we call active communication tasks to really foster critical thinking, problem solving, four skills, meaning speaking, reading, writing, and listening. And then also we use this idea of a real world simulation in the classroom, it's kind of like a role play. And so this is used to enhance their English for academic purposes. Simulation-based curriculum helps learners master and engage fully in the content. And in this case, we really want them dealing with this kind of challenging content, maybe related to race or equity, social justice, all these real world issues that they're gonna experience, especially coming to America for the first time. They don't know about a lot of these things. We also want to promote authentic communication. So putting them in these role plays, these simulations, gives them the chance to practice real life speaking activities that they can use outside of the classroom as well. Simulation-based curriculum can also foster positive changes in student behavior, attitude, emotions, and knowledge. It gets them engaged and caring about the curriculum and also helps students to internalize the concepts that they're reading about in a way that just reading or lecturing can't do. So we have kind of these, these different steps. We've broken down the engagement with text responsible writing. We have extensive source text 
that they need to comprehend and incorporate that content into their writing. So we start with reading, listening, we start with discussion to break down whatever the topic is that they're going to be talking about, reading about, writing about, speaking about. Then we move into these four skills centered. The text can be listening, reading, anything, as I said. These can address equity, social justice issues. We could have lectures, videos, podcasts, or even observational data and research activities. Then we move into the real world simulation. This is some sort of setup. So actually something like a conference or a round table discussion might be one of our simulations where we ask students to prepare for a round table or an open public forum where they need to bring a presentation uh, to argue for something. And so this also gives students ownership over their topic. And then finally, application and assessment, we look for transfer of the skills into expository, genre-based, or multimodal writing. Usually, because we are a writing program, we ask them to write an argumentative essay or a part genre essay, like focusing on the advantages and disadvantages of something or something more like, um, what was, sorry, what's problem and solution essays, that kind of thing. Sorry, I've done this a million times, but it popped out of my mind as soon as I wanted it. Um, but for the textbook, we're also looking at multimodal writing options and multimodal projects that can be part of these simulations. So with the simulation, we start with the schema activation, introducing the topic, practice with the four skills, developing their schema, moving into role play, they get assigned their roles and groups. And then after the simulation, they have to reflect, debrief as a class, and then move into that writing, expository, genre-based, or multimodal. So things like a letter to the editor, a blog, a website, an infographic. Those are the kind of multimodal projects that we're thinking about for the future. Some of the core questions here what should students know and be able to do by the end of the simulation cycle? What application and assessment will measure the learning and engagement with the content? What information do they need to evaluate from sources to produce the essay that we're going to have them do at the end? And then also what communicative tasks does the simulation suggest to support the writing process? So again, we have this continuing concern of this is a lot of really specific things that we want out of a textbook. And so far, we really just haven't been using very much of a textbook. So again, thinking about this land grant mission, we've adopted these four categories, thinking about how this can, you know, prepare the future workforce, professional preparedness, engaged citizenship, ethical leadership, personal responsibility, all of this kind of fit together. So our outline for our new textbook simulations for critical discussion. Uh, we've modified to fostering equity, innovating to nourish the world, technological innovation and application, enhancing human and animal health, and powering a growing world population sustainably. And so far we have several contributors who have agreed to take part in the book. Um, several of these are already uh, drafted and ready to go. Some of these are still in progress. You can see some of the titles are a little bit more interesting versus sort of that's, you know, who we have more fleshed out chapters from versus who is still in the drafting or revising phase. So I want to walk us through one of the simulations that I actually wrote as kind of a model for the textbook before we finish up today. And this one is all about, is online education accessible? So this is about uh, teaching students about disability, teaching students about technology, and getting them thinking really critically about what it means to be a student and what it means to be uh, in the classroom today, right, in 2023. We're in a different world now. So uh, part of this is a, kind of a debate. It, they're going to be setting up for a debate, and the debate is whether online instruction can be a really accessible tool both, you know, financially and like the reasons we think about online education being accessible, but also accessible for disabled people or inaccessible 
for disabled people. So thinking about all the issues that deaf or blind students might face in an online classroom, or even uh, issues that people with autism or other neurological or neurodevelopmental disabilities might face in online spaces. So this simulation is about accessibility. They have to think about disability justice. They have to read uh, and hear from sources from a variety of perspectives. The learning outcomes are to make connections between their lived experience and disability. My research is in this area. So a big thing for me is disability is the only minority group that anyone can join at any time, which is scary, but it's a reason that I think Freshmen in particularly are a great group to start talking to about these issues. And it's a, uh, an area that's not widely talked about in undergraduate right now. So making that connection between their lived experience, defining key terms about accessibility and disability justice, thinking about central arguments about online education and accessibility, making predictions about why a teacher or a student might prefer in-person versus online education, summarizing issues about accessibility and online education, synthesizing their knowledge about disability access, and evaluating the positions that they take in the simulation. We have some example simulation roles, and again, these are assigned to them. So the other thing is that they have to decide, or they, they don't get to decide yet what their view is. They have to take an objective stance based on what they think these people will want and will believe. And we have a whole description for each one. So for example, for an associate professor of disability studies, they're in favor of more online classes to promote accessibility. And we have sources to help support that for them. On the other side, we actually have an assistant professor of deaf studies who is against it because many deaf and hard of hearing students have a very difficult time with online classes because of a lack of accessibility and because most professors are not trained in making their Canvas or Blackboard courses as accessible as they need to be. Even with all the little buttons Blackboard has now, right, to make things more accessible, still, you know, it's just not accessible for their students. And so again, we have these specific sources pulled for them to re relate to for this uh, role. If you want to take a look, I do have a QR code for the book. This chapter is live as well as another chapter in the technology section. So I'll let you take a screenshot of that. Uh, but we're really excited about this book and the future of it. We have plans for, you know, even more chapters, but we're actually planning on running this current version of the book in the spring in 1123 and hopefully applying for a grant from uh, the, the OCO. Yeah, OCO, thank you from who, whoever we're here for today. Um, uh, but yeah, right now we're really excited about this. And uh, oh yeah, so were you gonna, okay, I'll just do it since I'm up here and we're about out of time. But so again, we, we started with this land grant priority areas as a framework for our text to help students engage with these grand challenges that they may face as young professionals and global citizens, especially our international students, right? These are already global citizens, but they're in a new place. These simulations address things like race and culture, health and well being, technology and innovation, and the environment and sustainable growth to bring together the, need, the needs of these diverse student populations and give them the opportunity to engage in topics that are tangibly related to their majors to improve their preparation and reduce barriers to student success. Mm -hmm. We've got our references there. And that is that is everything. I'll go back to the uh, QR code so y'all can see that. Thank you all so much for being here. And if you have any questions. Well, a question, but uh, maybe a, a resource. I was wondering if you're familiar with uh, reacting to the past. No. In the history curriculum that's offered by an art college. Oh, excellent. So you have to be a consortium member to, to, to actually download all the materials. Uh, they have summaries of all of the games. Oh, awesome. Uh, for instance, you can uh, impanel a group of history students to be the Kentucky State Legislator uh, on yeah. the verge of 
uh, succession and uh, they can debate about slavery in class. Um, you can have uh, a group of students uh, uh, pretend uh, like they're uh, court members uh, of Henry VIII and uh, they're debating about uh, forming the Anglican Church. Oh, wow, yeah. Uh, there's also a number of simulations uh, that involve uh, Asian history, uh, kind of writ large, a couple of Japanese and yeah. Chinese simulations as well. That's so, uh, the container of uh, disability and uh, the debate about disability uh, maybe becomes too restrictive. That might be a jumping off point for some additional simulations. Yeah, that's excellent. Can you repeat the name of that resource? Yeah, it's uh, called Reacting to the Past. Reacting. And it's uh, by Bernard College. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, you briefly mentioned about assessment of these. Yeah. Do you just do, like, what is you guys? push towards assessment of these, or what type of assessment, just uh, engagement in it, or yeah. So questions. Can you repeat the question briefly? For us? Yes. So the question was, what kind? I mentioned assessment. What kind of assessment do we do for the simulation? Is it just the writing at the end? So the the writing is kind of the primary, since we're a writing course. That's part of our focus. Um, is a research essay at the end of each simulation. We do two simulations per semester that are related topics. So this one that I showed would go along with another simulation we've written about AI use in the classroom, for example. Um, the other way we grade this, though, is their presentations. They have a group presentation. They have to make slides. Uh, it's not a speech class, but again, it is for skills based. So we're looking at their ability to uh, give a presentation. We ask them to uh, each you know, speak for part of the time, even if there's four members of a group, they all need to be part of that presentation. And we have a, a rubric that we use uh, for, for those presentations. Yeah, and they'll also do smaller writing assignments throughout the semester, smaller summaries of some readings and um, in-class activities throughout the semester, leading to this final written project. And by the end, the thing that I particularly like, I last ran a presentation on um, a simulation on uh, immigration law. It's amazing how talkative some very quiet international students get when they become an associate professor of something. So as soon as they take on this persona, they, they really become very chatty and very sure. Um, I had a Supreme Court judge who didn't say a word the entire semester until he became the Supreme Court judge and was making all of these declarations and he had the, the, the hammer and whatever else. So um, I think asking them to take these positions that might not align with their own beliefs yeah. can be really, really rewarding for them. But yes, the assessment is throughout the semester leading to that final written project or multimodal project. And I was just going to show some of the activities. Some of these are graded as well. So listening activities with specific questions to guide them through. But even if this is an in-class activity, right, we can take it up at the end of class for uh, at least participation grade. But then when we get into the comprehension section, right, they really need to be thinking about not just what they're listening to, but how that's going to apply to the simulation. And then the reading activities, we have comprehension questions as well as uh, a summary writing task that's a, a mini writing task before they get to the essay to practice summarizing sources, right? And so getting back to that kind of composition type type of thing, right? Some of these basic skills that their professors later on are going to expect them to have coming out of a composition course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question, though. Thank you. Hey, we are about out of time, yeah. so um, you all will be here throughout the day. Yeah, we're case, here. Okay? And the so slide deck will be available on yeah. the site, I'm sure. So yeah, um, sure. thank you so much, you guys. This is so exciting. Thank you. Is this in the part of the book that's available now? Yes, this is already available, as is the AI chapter. And I actually just made um, a couple more chapters available this week. One of them still has a, a little bit missing from it, um, so don't judge too harshly yeah. awesome. yes i'll put the Sorry. qr code back for you yeah there you go thanks so much